ko ko porongia te maunga, ko waipa te awa, ko rewi mani poto te tangata, uh, ko Dan Hukuru Aho, te hei Māori ora. Um, for interpretation, for those of you that don't speak Māori, um, I just said that uh, porongia is my mountain, waipa is my river, and rewi mani, rewi mani poto is, is, is the man from whom I've descended, and therefore here I am here this evening speaking to you. Personally, um, as a Māori, that, 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 that for anyone sort of who, who knows Māori people who knows, have been on the marae, they will know that um, one never introduces themselves with their name first. You always come in and say, this is my mountain, this is my river, this places me on this earth, this is who I am. My role in the Institute of, of Earth Science and Engineering is Community Earth System Science Programs Manager. Earth System Science. Um, Earth System Science is, is, is a new and, and novel way of, of looking at the way the world works. When I came through high school, it was chemistry and biology and, and physics, and, and never the twain shall meet. Earth System Science says, no, that's, that's not correct, because things that happen in, in, in the chemistry, you know, you've got chemis chemical reactions happening in our bodies, we've got chemical reactions happening in ecology, we've got chemical reactions happening everywhere, and then we have climate, and we have all sorts of things. So Earth System Science says, let's get rid of the, the silo thinking, let's start thinking as everything as, as a big whole, as, as all interconnected. Um, and it was during my PhD that I began to reconnect with um, with my Fano, who, who are, or with my extended Fano, down in the Te Awamutu and the Kafia area, and I was lucky enough to meet with a few of the Komatu, a few of the elders down there, and I was very bold and brazen, and I was, I was embarking on a PhD, of course, and, and I was the king of the world, and I sort of came up and I had these amazing, what I thought were amazing ideas, and um, they sort of nodded and, and smiled at me and said, "Okay, that's good, you know." You better have a few more years under your belt before you sort of come and try and, and do these things. But the great experience for me was is that they said, but we have faith in you. Go away and, and do your work and do your things and keep coming back and, and connecting with us. So when I came upon um, this Earth System Science way of thinking, it, it really gelled for me because... It is, an abs it is absolutely the way that Māori view the world. Um, te ao Māori, e everything is interconnected. There is, there is no silos. Um, what you do here affects what happens here. And increasingly, I, I think um, many scientists, and, and particularly ecologists, um, are understanding this. But f for, for the Māori in me, it was even going broader. And I, I was lucky enough to be... Um, to be coming through my scientific training at a time when, when, when people like Mason Dury, um, who was a professor down at uh, Massey University, were really tackling this question of um, Western science and indigenous knowledge, in this instance, uh, Mataranga Māori or Māori knowledge. For years, people had seen them as oil and water. You could mix them up a little bit, but then they would always separate. Um, they sort of stood up and really tried to um, establish, was this true? And um, to do so, they had to do things like define what is Mātauranga Māori. Um, I'm certainly not going to stand up here this evening in front of you and say this is the definitive answer for that, but um, my, my view of that, and maybe there might be people out here when we come to discussion who can, who, can, who can feed into this and who have a much broader knowledge and have more years under their belt, is, is Mātauranga is, is, is knowledge. I think that's the simplest way to view it. Um, and so when I'm trying to integrate uh, empirical, let's say, Western science um, with, with, with Mātauranga Māori, I was lucky enough that people ahead of me had sort of had the argument that it could happen. So they created an environment for which I said, well, I'm not questioning about whether it can or whether it cannot happen. I just assume that it can, and I, and I will move forward. And I suppose that even though I didn't really know it, I'd always thought that. And I, I recall um, specifically one day when I was interviewed for, for a PhD scholarship. Now, I had applied to um, the government th through FREST, or the Foundation for Research Science and Technology, for a PhD scholarship. Um, 
And they said to me, we love your application, you've got great grades. There's these other ones called um, Te Tipu Putaiao, which are Māori scholarships. Um, and we'd really like you to apply for one of those because we think you're you've got the academic merit, but we really want to give these a good academic boost. Um, and so I said, sure, I'll apply for that. And in my interview for that, um, the question was posed to me. Um, it has been said that, that, that Māori had no science. What is your response? And, and automatically I responded, well, that's nonsense. Um, and, and my evidence for that was, uh, let's say, take, for instance, Matariki, which just started today. Um, it's when Pleiades comes into the sky. That's an important part of the calendar for Māori because it let you know that it was time to do certain things. You either had to plant crops or you had to harvest crops or you had to get things ready. Um, also, how else did, did Māori know where if you went to the harbour at this time of the year that the kahawai would be there and they would be there in thick numbers? How else did Māori know that if you went to the rivers at this time of the year after a flood that the eels, the tuna, would be migrating through? And I think, um, I mean, what is science at, at the basic level? Science is, is having an idea and a hypothesis and, and it's about being able to repeat that. If you can say, I predict that this will happen again and again and again, surely that is science. And if the tuna keep running at the same time every year after certain events, that's pretty much science in my book. If the kahawai, you know when the kahawai are going to be running, that's pretty much science in my book. And if you can use the constellations or the stars, I mean, we have a, we have a lunar calendar ourselves. I fairly much think that's science.